Hey everyone, I'm Bernice. Those of you who've been following my channel so far know me for my content about how to get into and be successful in medical school. For those who haven't, subscribe to my channel and check out those videos. But I'm living another life as a graduate student getting a master's in public policy at the Harvard Kennedy School. Yep, I'm doing two different degrees at the same time. Y'all, I don't know how summer ended so abruptly, but here we are. So today is a day called shopping day. Classes have not officially started yet, but some of the professors will come and they'll do little like 15 minute intros, 15 to 30 minute intros of the class and then allow um, Q and A. It allows you during the registration period to decide whether or not it's a class that you think that you're gonna wanna take. At the end of summer, before getting back to campus, I went online to our course catalog called My Harvard to look up classes I was interested in taking this semester. Since I'm a dual medical and public policy school student, I looked for classes that would enrich my knowledge of healthcare delivery, ones that would discuss issues affecting my patients in their communities, and courses that would give me skills to be a better advocate. I also searched for classes taught by professors whose careers made me want to learn from them. I highlighted a few classes that piqued my interest and arranged my schedule so that I could get back to campus early enough to preview them before I officially enroll. are things I never expected to do. I have a master's in social work, I'm a community organizer and clinician. The clinical skills have helped me a great deal with dictators and members of Congress. <laughs> um, uh, and I've used that skill set, everything I've done since you asked me when I was director of child welfare in the state of Maryland, if I was going to negotiate with Iran and the black country. So when we find ourselves in the midst of this moment of generationally unprecedented activism all across this country, around the world, we see these insurgent demands for justice. I thank you for the opportunity to testify before you today on the subject of healthcare industry consolidation. I'm an academic health economist with long-standing research interests in competition and consolidation across a range of healthcare sectors. I unfortunately couldn't fit those first two classes I previewed into my schedule, but I did decide to take U.S. healthcare regulatory policy with Dr. Daphne, who you just saw. This semester, I also wanted to take classes at other grad schools across Harvard to get new perspectives. This process is called cross-registration, and it's a great opportunity to take advantage of while you're in grad school to get a more diverse experience. Since healthcare is largely run like a business in the U.S., I wanted to take a course at Harvard Business School before leaving. The campus is located a quick scenic walk over the Charles River. I looked through their course offerings and came across one called Transforming Healthcare Delivery. I went and sat in on the first class and it dawned on me that I agreed more than I disagreed with the business school students I was in class with. We definitely had different outlooks on the future of healthcare, and I decided to take the class because I wanted to be in the room to offer a clinician point of view, plus to challenge my classmates and myself to expand our perspectives. Then I took the cross campus shuttle up to the law school to catch the final class that I wanted to take before leaving Harvard. A legal scholar named Cass Sunstein, who also used to work with the Obama administration, was offering a course called Behavioral Economics, Law, and Public Policy. Behavioral economics is a fascinating field that examines how psychological and sociocultural forces impact economic decision-making and human behavior. The class had required me to apply for it a week before school even began. Pro tip, look at the course offerings before the semester starts, just in case there are classes that have extra requirements, like an application or early reading assignments. I sent in my CV and typed a brief statement about why I wanted to take the class. I was so excited because that morning I found out that I had been accepted. This course is going to be so relevant for me, especially as a future emergency room physician. I'm always going to be basically brokering behavior change with my patients first and foremost, my colleagues, and um, particularly because I am so interested 
in doing this type of health policy work, I'm also going to be doing a lot of brokering of change with communities, with other policymakers. So I think getting some of these frameworks down is gonna be really interesting. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm so excited about this class. First, I grabbed some lunch at the law school cafe. They have really good food, as you can see. Then I headed to my first class meeting. Summer vacation, is that what it's called? Uh, After class, I went to pick up my course packet of the readings for the upcoming semester, and I was met by this ton of bricks. <laughs> my good friend Catherine is a dual degree student between the Kennedy School and the law school, so she's no stranger to the law school reading load. She gave me some ideas on how she uses her old massive law school books. So law school books, not from this semester. So these are about three semester old. So I put them to new use. Oh my God, y'all. And Look I at use this. them as weight. This is great. <laughs> so I guess I know where this is ending up after the semester. <laughs> So now my schedule for the semester is set, and I'll be taking classes at the Kennedy School, Business School, and Law School. Even though I'm looking forward to all of my classes, a majority of my learning in grad school so far has actually occurred outside of the classroom. For example, last year, a student-created fellowship at my school gave me the opportunity to work as a student researcher with the transition team for the then incoming governor of my home state. I also learned so much from the guest speakers who visit campus. During the first year of my program, I had the blessing of meeting some of my inspirations and talking to them about how they've gone about their particular life trajectories and the ways that they exhibit resilience during challenges. Additionally, we learn from some of our more hands-on assignments. I have a meeting with my faculty advisor to talk about my policy capstone project. So basically at the end of our degree, we have to write kind of like a big thesis, but it's more of a tactical, practical one. In my case, I'm gonna do violence, hospital-based violence prevention work with a, one of the hospitals here in Boston. Um, so I have to talk to him about, you know, how to prepare for that and what, what next steps I need to be looking into. I had a productive meeting with my advisor. I also realized that with all the frenzy of starting the new year, I wanted to set myself up for having the healthiest mindset. So I went to the Counseling and Mental Health Services Center. I think it is so, so important that we prioritize mental health whenever we are in graduate school. And that's something that I did at the beginning of medical school and I have been neglecting a little bit since and so I'm getting back into it this semester it's a goal of mine. The benefit of places like grad school is you actually have therapy um, through the school. I'm actually re-establishing care here to start seeing someone hopefully weekly or at least regularly just to talk through things and make sure you know that like my spirit is okay. When you have the opportunity it's so powerful. Per usual I was awoken by the sounds of early morning piano practice by the elementary age kids who live in the apartment above me. They've actually been improving since we moved in last year. <laughs> On Fridays, I don't have any class scheduled, only review sessions. So I hung out with my doggy nephew, my roommate's dog, a cute Pomeranian named Mr. Muggles, for a little bit after waking up. Then I headed over to the business school campus for a project meeting I have with the group I'll be working with in my business school class. We're partnering with a local hospital that serves patients from low socioeconomic backgrounds. And we're working on ways to optimize the screening procedures that the hospital uses to identify patients who need additional resources outside of the clinical encounter. And like this isn't our battle to wage and I think it's like they can like take or leave as they see fit but I that union thing is like still in the back like will it be a problem if like Evans and some clinics do one thing and like the other clinics don't do something. Group projects are a major part of many graduate school programs. The idea is that in the working world after school you will almost always have to find ways to accomplish your tasks in a team which means learning how to manage different working styles and personalities. These group projects are also a good opportunity to network and build deeper relationships with people in your class who you may not have otherwise met. Perfect. 
Okay. Okay, go team. After my meeting, I went to the Kennedy School's weekly social gathering called Quorum Call. Every week, we have food, wine, and beer, and the idea is to foster community among the students. It's called Quorum Call because the goal is to gather a quorum, or a majority of the student body, into the space. Different student groups host it each week, so many times culture groups and affinity groups will display aspects of their culture, like their flag or foods or snacks during the event. It's in this room called the Winter Garden, which is so beautiful because it's an indoor space built to make you feel like you're outside. I love coming to this event because it's an opportunity to catch up with people who I haven't gotten to see during the week given our hectic schedules or different activities. Sometimes we lean into our nerdiness and we talk about deep issues like the state of the world. Other times we just laugh about nothing. <laughs> I hung out for a while with friends from my MPP program and one very special friend. Very important that you guys know who this is. This is Shawan. We are so besties. We went to high school, college, and then now we're at HKS together. Oh, he's repping. I see it. Eleven years. <laughs> Eleven years. Everybody, get you a Shawan. Get you a bestie. It's very important. That's what I wish for everybody in my game. Yeah. Okay, back to our program. <laughs> So my roommate and I love having people together. And so we're hosting a brunch. It's like a welcome back to get everyone together. I'm bringing together friends from medicine, my policy degree, people who are living in Boston, who are from college, people from like all different walks of life. And like people are making like these amazing connections. Since it was our first week back at school, my roommate and I decided to throw a brunch party to say hello to all the friends we hadn't seen since before summer. We made it a potluck and there was a ton of food and fun. The key about grad school is the connections you make here. It's these networks that can open doors for your career later, and more importantly, they develop into meaningful friendships. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something, and got a little insight about how grad school looks and also how I'm incorporating my master's degree into my medical education. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, as it helps this channel grow into a bigger community. Much love, Bernice.